Uh, welcome to The Voice of Nursing. Uh, hello, my name is Adrian Tracy. I'm the CEO of ICG Medical. Uh, joined here today by Chris Poynton, uh, founder or co-founder, should I say, of uh, Hello, My Name Is, alongside Dr. Craig Granger. Um, Voice of Nursing is a support network, a podcast, and a blog uh, supporting our nurses throughout the UK, America, and Australia. Um, rather than letting me talk too much, uh, I want to talk to our guest today, Chris. and uh, He can introduce himself and talk to about the founder and the movement that he's created uh, and some of the improvements they've been doing in patient care. Welcome Chris. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Chris Poynton, co-founder of the hashtag Hello My Name Is campaign that my late wife Dr Kate Granger and I founded in 2013 now. A long time ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, almost five years. So Chris, talk to us about the, the background of how it came about. Uh, obviously in, in slightly unfortunate circumstances of course. Um, but it'd be good to hear a bit about the story, the background of how it came about and also the reasons and the improvements since. Yeah, so I suppose the story all starts back in 2011 when my wife, Kate, and I were on holiday in California. Um, at this point, we'd been married six years. Um, we decided to take an extended holiday to California where we've got family and friends who live there. And it was whilst on holiday that Kate, she just wasn't really feeling herself. I mean, Kate was a doctor herself, but she just had lower back pain, she was quite lethargic, but being the doctor that she was, she just put that down to jet lag, she put that down to travelling in different vehicles, but the day came when I found Kate in complete agony on the bed at the accommodation where we were staying, and I said to Kate, look darling, we need to get you into hospital, we need to take you into ER in the States to find out what's going on, which was in 2011. We did that. If we hadn't have done that at that point, then Kate would have probably died in America because her kidneys were getting blocked by various tumours across the lower abdomen, which then meant her kidneys were impacted. So we had to have some stents inserted in America, we had two nights hospital stay in America. And then we returned back to our NHS to pursue further treatment and that's when our journey with cancer started, 2011 and Kate's diagnosis after several tests and scans turned out to be a desmoplastic small round cell tumour which is a very rare and aggressive form of sarcoma which normally impacts adolescent boys but it had picked on a 29 year old female for whatever reason but that was just our life, that's how the cards had been dealt for our lives and we had to play those cards as best we could at that point. Kate's prognosis then was six to twelve months to live so 29 years old I was in my early 30s to be told that your wife's gonna die within the next 12 months it was a heartbreaking time for us both and for the wider family but you know Kate was a determined individual and being a doctor she wanted to return to work and she did return to work she actually became a consultant looking after older people um, in the NHS something that she was truly proud of achieving but she also wanted to raise money for charities, so she wrote two books. What are the books called? So the first book is called The Other Side, and that's all about being a doctor, but seeing it through the eyes of a patient as well, so seeing it from the other side. And then the second book is called The Bright Side, which is about living with a terminal cancer and actually enjoying life and ticking off items on the bucket list. 2012 was a fairly good year for Kate and I, um, to say that she'd only been given up to 12 months to live. You know, we had a, a good year, we ticked off so many items on the bucket list. And then we get to 2013 and that's when the campaign started in August 2013 and it was on the back of a hospital admission where there was a distinct lack of introductions from various people across healthcare. You know, consultants were coming to see Kate, weren't introducing themselves, healthcare assistants, nurses were coming to see Kate, not introduce themselves. And on one occasion, one of the nurses actually was taking Kate's blood without asking for a date of birth and was talking to another nurse at the same time whilst you know, um, looking after Kate. So it really started to get to Kate at this point and she was starting to reflect on the day's events when we were talking about this. But she was actually starting to, starting to moan a little bit about the lack of introductions. And I'm a firm believer, and the people that work for me in my career, is if you've got something to moan about, then you need to go away and do something about it. If you're not happy, to do something about something that you're not happy with, then you need to stop whinging about this because 
everyone in this world can make a difference. So that night, Kate and I were talking about the events of the day and the lack of introductions, and I said to her, look, darling, you need to you know, stop whinging about this or we need to do something about it. Now, Kate was quite prolific across healthcare. She was a keynote speaker at various events. She was an inspiration to so many people at that point. And she had around 24,000 followers on Twitter, um, even then. So we decided to use her already big social media presence to start a campaign and we called it hashtag hello my name is and that's when it was born. In August 2013 between a lady who's facing her own mortality and her non-medic husband because my background isn't in healthcare and that's how the campaign started and you know before we knew it we had some kind of global phenomenon on our hands. But I suppose the big thing with the campaign is we Although we got a lot of response initially from across the world and it was needed as a prompt and as a reminder and a refresher of common courtesy, we know that many thousands of people across the healthcare system across the world, especially in the nursing fraternity, will have always introduced themselves and will continue to always introduce themselves. So we don't want to patronise those people that have always done that. But because of the response we did get, we knew that it was the right thing to continue with and you know, here we are almost five years later on than when the campaign started and you know we've had over two billion Twitter impressions, it's in over 20 countries, it's, it's revolutionising patient care with a simple introduction of four words. And then tell me a bit about Brian the Porter. So yeah, on that one day, and that's something I should have mentioned actually, so on that one day when there was a distinct lack of introductions, the person that did actually introduce themselves was Brian. He was the porter. So he came to take Kate down to theatre on this one day, and he did say, oh, hello, my name is Brian. And then he went on to talk to us about things that were happening outside of healthcare. So trying to sort of put Kate at ease somewhat, rather than talk about medical mm -hmm. uh, things. So he was talking about cricket, he must have picked up on the fact that Kate liked cricket. So there's little things that really do make a difference. Rather than Kate um, moaning about the lack of introductions, the one positive on that day was the porter. And this is something that I now talk about in the work that I do. It's, mm. It doesn't matter what position you hold within healthcare, you could be a chief exec, you could be a cleaner, you could be a porter, you could be a nurse. All those jobs are important in their own right and nobody is just anything, you know. And it does sometimes annoy me when I speak to people and say, oh, I'm just a cleaner or I'm just an analyst or I'm just whatever they may be because we can't operate on people if the operating table isn't clean. Mm -hmm. We can't sort of treat people if they're not being looked after well by the nurses. We can't, you know do a variety of things, it all has to fit together well so everyone's important and, and you know, for those people that say I'm just a nurse, you're not just a nurse, you're an amazing individual that looks after so many people in your careers and does an amazing job and people who are being looked after by these individuals are truly thankful for that. Yeah, I think there's two things, isn't there? That, you know, you talk about the patient. At least Kate had a medical background. Yes. And even then, you think of people with non-medical background, how scared they are at that time. You know, a little bit of commonality and a little bit of communication sets people at ease. Can really help. Yeah, help. It, it, it does, and, and like you said, there, Kate was a doctor. You know, she was a doctor in older people. Mm -hmm. She became a consultant looking after older people, and even she got frustrated, and even she got. Um, didn't know some of the terminology that was being used at certain times within her experiences. And that was somebody who was you know, very well educated in medicine and understood the system probably better than a lot of other people would have. If it had been me in hospital, obviously as a non-medic, some of the terminology that was used at that point, I wouldn't have understood it. And would I have the voice to ask that question to the people telling that information? When you're vulnerable, when you're laying on a hospital bed, you might not do so. We have to make sure that the care is bespoke to the individual. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer that a lot of the time that is, but for those times that it's not, 
that experience isn't great for that. Yeah, making it personal, I think, is a big thing. I think coming back to your point about the cleaner and the nurse and you know, everyone running the hospital and saving those lives, I think it's a, I don't know if it's, a, it's, a, it's a story about when JFK was at the space station and he meets a, meets a, a cleaner, a janitor, yes. and he says, uh, what's your job? And he says, I'm sending a man to the moon because they actually felt part of that team, that they were all part of the team sending a man to the moon no matter what their job was. I don't know if that's a myth or a, or a true story, but it, you know, you hear it said quite a lot. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, if, if one part fails, then the whole thing is in jeopardy, and that's the same in healthcare. You know, if one part of the equation doesn't do the job correctly, then that could bring down the whole system of care for that individual. Interesting. You, you speak about um, KAD, some core values, mm -hmm. um, which you, know, you speak about some of your talks that we can talk about and come to later, but it'd be good to sort of get a refresher and understanding of what they were. Yeah, so as part of Kate's um, work as a doctor and as part of her you know, treatment in hospital, she came up with her own values, which now resonate really well and fit in really well with the campaign but also across organizations across the world they've embedded some of these values within their own organizational values so the first one is communication now communication in all walks of life has to be effective and timely and be spoke to either the individual or be spoke to the situation and like we've mentioned before, it's got to be in the right term. And, at the and right communication level. starts with an introduction. You know, that is the first step on the ladder of effective communication between two individuals in any setting, in any walk of life. You know, when Kate was first diagnosed, the communication that took place at that point wasn't great. You know, it was a junior doctor that had come to tell Kate her diagnosis wasn't making eye contact, almost wanted to leave the room. There is more that can be done on communication because that is something that's huge, like I said, in all walks of life, be it healthcare, business, wherever we may be. So communication is the first value that we hold as part of the campaign and one of Kate's core values. The second one is around how the little things make a difference. So the little things could be something as simple as making somebody a cup of tea or getting down to the same eye level as the patient so that you're not stood looming over that patient. In other walks of life it could be you know <clears throat> holding a door open for somebody or letting somebody out at a junction in the car. It doesn't have to just be in healthcare but those little things can make somebody's day or they can you know, make for a better environment in healthcare as well. So the little things, like I said about Brian, he picked up on the fact that Kate liked cricket. So one of the little things that he did really well was talk about something going on outside of healthcare, which was at that point cricket. So the third value is about seeing me as an individual, not just a bed number, not just an illness, not just you know something healthcare related. Kate was obviously my wife, she was a sister, she was a daughter, she was an auntie. She was a lot more than just somebody with a rare and aggressive form of cancer. And that's how people should be seen, they are seen as a person. So if I was to go into hospital, I'm sure that my, my file would say Christopher Poynton, but I prefer to be called Chris. So that's something, that's the starting point of that relationship about seeing me as a person. My name's Chris. Yes, I was born as Christopher, but actually I prefer to be called Chris. So those things, you know, really do make a difference. Um, and getting to understand the person behind an illness can actually help shape their treatment and make it more specific to them, which in essence could actually improve it for both the healthcare system that we're operating in and for the patient and their family and friends. So that's the third value. And then the final value that we hold is around making sure the patient is at the heart of every decision that's made and also is involved in those decisions if applicable. Some people might not want to be involved in those decisions, but some people want to know absolutely everything that's going on. So it's got to be, once again, bespoke to the individual laying in the bed. But once again, it's applicable in other walks of life because from my background in retail, you know, we always say that the customer should be the heart of every decision that's made. So anything that we do as a business needs to have the end goal of improving it for the customer in mind. 
it's the same in healthcare. Any decision that's made, either be in a hospital or be in government or wherever it could be, has to be with the patient in mind at the end of the day. So if it's reducing costs or if it's reducing waiting times or improving the food that's served to patients, it's got to be with the patients in mind. So those, three, those four values really do resonate well across the NHS and across wider healthcare across the world because they are so simple to achieve and all that sounds simple, an introduction does go a long way in achieving a lot of those four values. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a reminder, isn't it, about the personal care. <coughs> You know, not, not treating a patient like a number, and you know they are a person, they are a mum, they're a dad, they're an auntie, an uncle. You know, yeah. they've got a life outside of that, and you know, and focusing on that. And sometimes it's very difficult with the, the pressures. A lot of our nurses, doctors, and healthcare, you know, people are on, are under sometimes. But you know, it helps to remind sometimes. As I said, some people have done it all the time, just yeah. to remind some oh, others. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's a small thing. So you, the campaign's been going for three years, four years now. Um, almost five years. Five years. So, yeah, the 23rd of July is. Um, going to be recognised every year as an international Hello My Name Is Day. Now the reason we've chosen the 23rd of July to celebrate the campaign is because that's the day that um, Kate passed away. It's also the day that we got married. So Kate passed away on our 11th wedding anniversary. So this year will be 13th wedding anniversary. But yeah, the campaign, albeit is embedded in a lot of organisations across the NHS and across the world, you know, like I said before, we operate in over 20 countries. For me, I want this campaign to be in every country in the world. And a way of doing that is to make sure that one day a year we relaunch the campaign and launch the campaign in new organisations. And also I think it's a time for everyone to stop and reflect on their own lives and their own organisations and think, this person was going through so much, you know, the adversity that Kate was going through in her life, she still made a difference, you know, she helped start this campaign, she, you know, raised so much money for charity, you know, together we raised over a quarter of a million pounds for charity in, you know, four years, five years, she was somebody that became a consultant in her own right. She was spending so much time traveling, talking about the campaign, even though she was you know, having chemotherapy the following day. Those kind of things, people can all take something from and um, be inspired by how she lived her life and how we lived our life together as well. Um, but yeah, the campaign is, like I said, coming to its fifth year, our fifth anniversary, and it will continue for, well, way past I'm gone, um, I'm, sh I'm sure, so. And, and tell us a little bit about the website, and about the, the support we can give, or you know, where we can find you, and you know, there's, you're sporting a lovely lanyard there. Yeah. So. <laughs> With the hello, my name is straight on the front, front and centre. So we, um, so the website is hello, my name is .org uk, and like I said, the 23rd of July is a poignant date for a variety of reasons, obviously very personal reasons for me, but also for the campaign. And this year we're actually relaunching the website in advance of the 23rd of July this year. And the plans for the 23rd of July, I, you know, I'm open to any suggestions that people have, but it could be, you know, people are buying lanyards and name badges for their organisations. Anything that's listed on the website, they are only listed on the website if they donate a percentage of or a fixed amount from the sale of anything that goes through that website. So we have lanyards and obviously name badges, we sell mugs which are personalised mugs for individuals, we do wristbands, we do a whole host of other um, personalised um, merchandise. And the website is also useful for where you can buy Kate's books from. And um, when I release my book, you're going to be able to buy my book from the website. We have educational resource on there. It's got a huge photo gallery. So I suppose the big thing with the campaign and the reason why it's grown so big is of the endorsements that we've had from across the world. So yes, in healthcare, first and foremost, that is where the campaign started. That's where it's making a huge difference, and that's where. I'm truly proud of the people that work within, you know, firstly our NHS, but in the wider healthcare across the world. But we've also had some quite high-profile endorsers of the campaign, so it's 
it's selling points, like it takes very little time to do, it costs very little money and it makes a difference. So we've had the Prime Minister has endorsed the campaign, we've had Nicola Sturgeon endorse the campaign. But the former Prime Minister as well, haven't you? Former. Yes, uh, yes we have, yes. Going, um, through, going through the houses. And it just shows how much of a difference it's making, but then from a non-healthcare perspective, We've had people like Kylie Minogue endorse the campaign and Sir Richard Branson and you know members of the royal family. So those kind of key endorsements help spread the message across social media because when Kate passed away she had around forty five thousand followers at that point. But these people have got, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. So we don't do it for anything other than highlighting the message and making a difference because it's applicable like I said before in all walks of life it's not just a healthcare um, thing and since its conception it is making a difference for patients but the one thing that I am probably most proud of with the campaign is how the nursing fraternity have really got behind the campaign and really do show the passion and drive with the campaign and you know I go and talk at a lot of events you know since September I'm, I'm on a career break I'm on, I'm on a global tour with the campaign and I've spoken over 200 events since September but when it's an open invite in a, um, a medical institution when it's an open invite for people to come and listen the room is full or 80% you know, full of people from the nursing community and you know, nurses, which is great to see and it really shows that they are truly behind the campaign and they show such compassion and passion for the campaign and it's amazing to speak to them as well on a one-to-one -on -one basis about the work, the amazing work that they do every single day to make a difference to people's lives and you know, personally I sometimes don't know how they do it because, like I say, I'm not medically trained, but they make a difference and, you know, people are truly thankful for that. Yeah, I think when you speak to most doctors, they, they thank all nurses, they said there's no way they could ever do their job without them. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, they're, they're very exceptional what they do and, you know, the rewards they get maybe are not financially as motivating, but they're vocationally actually, you know, just exceptional. Yes. What, what sort of changes have you seen in the five year period in, in regards to some of the conversations you've had? Um, or what, the, you know, what have you seen sort of from the point of view of going, has it been a, oh, we do that anyway? And that's coming to the point of view going, actually, we've got something here. So initially, we got a lot of feedback from individuals or organisations saying, oh, well, we always introduce ourselves. But then we used to go back to them and say, well, actually, if you stop and think, do you? And if you watch people within your organisation and see how they interact with patients, you know, ask yourself, is that actually a true statement or not? And then on, on, on the other side to that as well, it's even now we get a lot of responses through the website or through social media on Twitter of where it's been highlighted as something that's made a difference to a patient experience, as in they have had an introduction and that's meant a better conversation. But also we still get so many um, examples where it's not happening and that's what we need to try and eliminate. And I get, you know, we work in stressful times, you know, we are potentially under-resourced and potentially underfunded, but it takes, you know, a couple of seconds to say that and it could probably save time in the long run and it does make that difference, it's huge the difference that it can make and we've seen it on patient experience surveys, how much better patients feel when they feel that they know the people that they're being treated by and looked after by and a name is a simple thing to to start it with but it has improved don't get me wrong you know it's improved in the last five years and it'll continue to improve as the change becomes embedded in organizations and for those organizations where it is truly embedded so they will all have their own personalized name badges and posters and other things around the hospital but they've got to make sure that they are using the four words so we'd rather have none of the merchandise anywhere if people are using those four words and introduce themselves and that's great but it's good as a prompt as a reminder and also the logo is quite a friendly looking logo so it's got the smile on there you know which is what we asked the designer who did it for us to incorporate because it's a friendly looking logo it's a friendly design that puts people at ease when they're at vulnerable times in their life. And you mentioned about you're writing a book at the moment? Yeah, so I'm, for my own benefit and also 
to help other people going through something potentially similar to what I've been through. I've started to, um, well, I'm in the middle of writing a book which tells the story to an extent, but it's almost some of the some of the um, pieces of, of advice that I had from individuals when I was going through you know, being a partner of somebody with terminal cancer and the things that worked for, well for me and put those down in a book that people can you know, share and, and use if they so wish and also to help raise money for the charities. And I think for me as well it helped in the in the process of you know of grief as well by having everything out of my head into a book which I know will potentially help other people sort of it, it, it gives me that sense of doing something good for others um, and yeah that should be out by the end of this year that's my plan um, but yeah just that final sort of pulling together everything and um, make it into something that's I'm amazed worthy. you can fit it in with the amount of speaking you're doing and talks and yeah. run, running around the country and off to Australia and yeah and, and, and that's the thing it's, it, it's fitting it in where I can when I've got the right headspace as well because you know I've, I've been to Australia a couple of times in the last six months and you think oh yeah on the plane you can you know do a bit of writing but it's probably not the right space to be putting pen to paper and writing a book which is you know quite personal and um, emotional at times so yeah but yeah I mean the campaign has spread and Australia's a huge endorse Australia and New Zealand are huge endorsers of the campaign and it's spread hugely across those across those countries which I'm really proud of as well so fantastic so tell us a little bit about where we can find you Twitter websites if people want to follow and get involved you know where, yeah. where can we go so on Twitter um, my Twitter handle is at point and Chris um, and on the website it's hello my name is org uk and also on Twitter you can use hashtag hello my name is to find you know what other people have been tweeting about the campaign because it is used a lot across not just in healthcare but wider um, events and my when I'm on Twitter I'm always asking and encouraging people to use the campaign and I know you're, you're big about the photos as well in this printing off of the hello my name is yes. tags yeah so we have I mean if you go onto the website or if you look on Twitter you can see a lot of people there's an A4 sign that's available to download from the website with the you know the logo on there and the website and the Twitter handles and if people can print those off sign their name on it and have a picture taken and tweet it obviously copying in myself and the and the campaign then that's a one another way of spreading that and if people have got any you know high profile endorsers that they want to encourage to um, endorse the campaign then that would be great as well and also on the website there is a a leaflet that can be downloaded and then printed which explains the background to the campaign which can then be given out at events or in hospitals or you know for people just to read themselves if they so wish and there's like I said a lot of links to recent videos recent events that we've that have taken place and you can also search for on YouTube so if you put in Kate's name to YouTube so Kate Granger or if you put in my name to YouTube or hashtag hello my name is there's a whole raft of videos that people can you know, view and download and, and use at events if they so wish as well because, you know, and we've also had, well about 12 months ago we commissioned a playwright to write a play all about Kate and I's life. Fantastic. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So and thank you for what you're doing. I think, yeah, it's definitely improving patient care. Uh, you know, that personal touch is just amazing. So thank you so much. Thank you so much as well. Um, thank you to all our nurses and all our doctors and all our healthcare workers. Uh, thank you from the Voice of Nursing. We'll catch up with you soon.